greetings to everyone i am mohammad hussain student of bs honors mathematics institute of numerical sciences cust this is functional analysis so in this video lecture we are going to talk about the generalized hanbanak theorem since there are three forms of this theorem one is for the real linear spaces second one is for the second one is the hanbanak theorem generalized version and the third one is hanbanak theorem for norm linear spaces so in this lecture we are going to discuss about the hanbanak theorem generalized version we will prove the generalized hanbanak theorem in this lecture the outlines of the lecture include motivation after this we will recall the hanbanak theorem for real linear spaces then we will use this theorem the hanbanak theorem for real linear spaces in the proof of generalized hanbanak theorem which is our main target in this lecture and the reference book we are using is introductory functional analysis with applications by kraes sig so the motivation is that the basic idea behind the hanbanak theorem is that the hanbanak theorem deals with the extension of linear functionals so it allows the extension of bounded linear functionals defined on a subspace of some vector space that is the hanbanak theorem says that if we have a vector space and it has a subspace such that a linear functional is defined on that subspace then hanbanak theorem claims that we can extend this linear functional defined on this subspace we can extend the linear functional defined on this subspace of a vector space from this subspace to the entire vector space and it also shows that there are enough continuous linear functionals defined on every normed space to make the study of dual space interesting note that dual space is the space of all linear functionals defined on a normed space x the set of all linear functionals defined on a normed space x becomes a vector space known as dual space so before going to our main target we will discuss we will discuss a definition of a sublinear functional so what's a sublinear functional by definition this is a real valued functional p on a vector space x which is sub additive that is p of x plus y is lesser or equal to p of x plus p of y for all x y belongs to x and the second one is that p is positive homogeneous that is p of alpha x is equal to alpha times p of x note that there mm, this alpha is a non negative real number an example of a sublinear functional is a norm defined on a vector space a norm defined on a vector space is a sublinear functional because norm has n3 the positive homogeneity and n4 the triangular inequality so both of these properties are satisfied by norm so norm is a sublinear functional So first of all we recall the hanbanak theorem for real linear spaces then we will use this theorem in our main result the generalized hanbanak theorem this theorem will be used in the proof of the generalized hanbanak theorem this theorem states that let x be a real vector space and p a sublinear functional on x furthermore 
let f be a linear functional which is defined on a subspace z of x and satisfies this three this inequality that is f of x is lesser or equal to p of x for all x belongs to z note that this f of x is a linear functional defined on subspace z of the vector space x and this p of x is a sublinear functional which is defined on the vector space x so this 3 says that if f of x is lesser or equal to p of x in other words we can say that this f of x the linear functional defined on the subspace z is dominated by or is bounded by this sublinear functional p of x then this theorem claims that then f has a linear extension f tilde from z to x satisfying f tilde of x is lesser or equal to p of x for all x belongs to x that is this f tilde the linear extension of f of x will also have the same property that is f tilde of x will also be dominated by this p of x or f tilde of x will also be bounded by this p of x the sublinear functional defined on the vector space x and also another common property between these two is that this f of x was a linear functional so when we extend this f of x to f tilde of x then is this f, tilde, f tilde of x will also be a linear functional this f tilde of x will also be linear on x and f tilde of x will be equal to f of x for every x belongs to z it means that when we restrict this f tilde from this greater domain to the smaller domain z when we restrict this f tilde of x from this larger domain to this smaller domain, smaller domain z then this the image of this f tilde will be equal to the image of this f for all x belongs to z this is the restriction when we restrict f tilde to this domain then the image of f tilde will becomes f of x so this theorem will be used in the proof of generalized and Barak theorem so here is the statement of generalized han banach theorem the generalized han banach theorem states that let x be a real or complex vector space and p a real valued functional on x which is sub additive that is for all x y belongs to x p of x plus y is lesser or equal to p of x and for every scalar alpha satisfies p of alpha x is equal to alpha absolute p of x note that this p, uh, p is a real valued functional defined on the vector space x which is also a sublinear functional the condition 1 equation 1 this condition and equation 2 this condition these are the conditions of sublinear functional this is the sub additivity and this is positive homogeneity this p is a real real valued functional defined on x which is also sub additive which is also sublinear functional furthermore let f be a linear functional which is defined on a subspace z of x and satisfies f of x absolute is lesser or equal to p of x for all x belongs to z note that when x is a real vector space then f of x the linear functional defined on z will be will also be a linear a real linear functional so this inequality this lesser are equal will be 
the usual lesser or equal of real numbers. But when x is complex vector space, then f of x, the linear functional defined on the complex subspace Z, will be a complex value, complex value real functional. So when we take its absolute, it will become linear real real. So this inequality will become the usual lesser or equal of complex number. Then this theorem claims that then f has a linear extension f tilde from z to x satisfying f tilde of x is lesser or equal to p of x for all x belongs to x. Both this f of x and f tilde of x have a common property that this f of x was dominated by p of x and when we extend this f of x from z to x then this it becomes f tilde of x and it has also the same property the same bounded, boundedness property that is f tilde of x will be dominated by this p of x so the main concern in this theorem is that we will prove that f tilde of x is lesser or equal to p of x that is there exists a linear extension of this f of x from z to x known as f tilde which satisfies this 3 star so here is the proof of the theorem the proof of the theorem is divided into two parts a part a and part b in part a we consider x to be a real vector space when x is real the situation is simple that is 3 implies f of x is lesser or equal to p of x here is the 3 this this is 3 this implies that f of x absolute is lesser or equal to p of x but when f of x is real then we can write f of x without absolute that is f of x will be lesser or equal to p of x here f of x is lesser or equal to p of x for all x belongs to z hence by the hahn banach theorem for real linear spaces this is the hahn banach theorem for real linear spaces there is a linear extension f tilde of this f there is a linear extension f tilde of this f from z to x such that f tilde of x is lesser or equal to p of x for all x belongs to x so this is by the Anbanak theorem for real linear spaces that is when f of x is dominated by p of x or f of x is bounded by p of x then there exists the extension of that f of x known as f tilde of x which will also be dominated by or bounded by this p of x a real valued functional defined on the vector space x from this equation 4 and from equation 2 we obtain equation 2 is here this is equation 2 the positive homogeneity of the linear functional p from this 4 and 2 we obtain minus times f tilde of x is equal to f tilde of minus x because f tilde is linear so we can write as f tilde of minus x so using 4 we can write f tilde of minus x as f tilde of minus x is lesser or equal to p of minus x then using the positive homogeneity equation 2 of p we can write p of minus x as minus 1 absolute times p of x which will become p of x so this implies that minus times f tilde of x will be lesser or equal to p of x minus times f tilde of x will be lesser or equal to p of x from this we can write 
f tilde of x is greater than or equal to minus times p of x we have shifted this minus to the right so the inequality will change so f tilde of x is greater than or equal to minus p of x now look at here f tilde of x is greater than or equal to minus p of x and also look at here f tilde of x is lesser or equal to p of x so f tilde of x we can say that f tilde of x absolute is lesser or equal to p of x that is the 3 star here this is 3 star that f tilde of x absolute will be lesser or equal to p of x so when x is real vector space then we have done then we have proved, proved the 3 star in the part b <coughs> we consider x to be complex vector space so when x is complex vector space then the subspace z of x will also be complex vector space hence f is complex valued and we can write f of x equal to f1 of x plus iota times f2 of x so when x is complex vector space then we can define this f this f linear functional on z so f will have in this form because the vector space z is complex vector space so the linear functional will be in this form f1x plus iota times f2x where f1 and f2 are real value functionals now for a moment we regard x and z which are complex vector spaces we regard them as real vector spaces and denote, denote them by xr and zr respectively as we have regarded them the real vector spaces so the scalar multiplication will also be restricted to real numbers instead of complex numbers since f is linear on z here we have suppose that f is a linear functional defined on subspace z of vector space x since f is linear on z and f1 and f2 are real valued so f1 and f2 are re uh, linear functionals on zr note that this zr is a vector subspace of the vector space xr and xr is a real vector space so this zr is also a real vector space and f1 and f2 are linear functionals on zr also f1 of x is lesser or equal to f of x absolute because the real part of a complex number cannot exceed the absolute value that is look at here this is the real part of f of x so when we take the absolute of this f of x the absolute value of this functional f of x will also be greater than will always be greater than the value of this real part this value of this real part will always be lesser or equal to the absolute value of f of x that is the real the real part of a complex number cannot exceed the absolute value hence by 3 we can write f1 of x is lesser or equal to p of x for all x belongs to zr here is the 3 here this is 3 which says that f of x absolute is lesser or equal to p of x from this we can write f1x is lesser or equal to p of x because zr is a real vector space so we can write f1x without absolute that is f1x is lesser or equal to p of x 
Hence, my Dhyan Banak theorem for real linear spaces. This is Dhyan Banak theorem for real linear spaces. There is a linear extension f1 tilde of this f1. There is a linear extension f1 tilde of f1 from zr to xr such that f1 tilde of x is lesser or equal to p of x. Since zr and x are was the real vector spaces so we can use the Hanbarak theorem for real vector spaces so this f1 x has a linear extension f1 tilde x which will satisfy the same property that f1 x is bounded by p of x so f1 tilde the linear extension of f1 x will also be bounded by this p of x so from the four star this equation and this equation from equation 5 we can write this that is f1 of x is equal to f1 of tilde x for all x belongs to zr that is when we restrict this f1 tilde from the larger domain xr to the smaller domain zr then the image of f1 tilde and the image of f1 this image of this f1 tilde and the image of this f1 they become equal when we restrict f1 tilde to the smaller domain zr so this takes care of f1 and now we are going to f2 now returning to z and using f equal to f1 plus iota times f2 we can write for all x for every x belongs to z we can write iota times f1x plus iota times f2x is equal to iota times f1x that is when we multiply iota to this equation on both sides we can write it as this we can write it in this form so iota times f of x is equal to f of iota x because f is a linear functional so this iota can be right inside so iota times f of x will becomes f of iota x now this f of iota x by this formula can be written as f1 of iota x plus iota times f2 of iota x now by the equality of complex numbers the real parts on both sides must be equal the real part on the left side is minus f2 of x and the real part on the right side is f1 iota x that is minus times f2 x will be equal to f1 times f will be equal to f1 iota x so we can write this by the equality of complex numbers so this implies that f2 of x will become minus times f1 of iota x this so we write f2 in terms of f1 also we have find here we have find the linear extension of f1 x in terms of we we had find the linear extension of f1 x f1 tilde x so here now we had write that is we have already find the linear extension of f1 this f1 in turn known is f1 tilde x so now here we have written f2 x in terms of f1 x since the extension of f1 is f1 tilde so the extension of this this is also f1 so the extension of this will be minus times f1 tilde iota x 
so here hence if for all x belongs to x we said f tilde of x is equal to f1 tilde x minus iota times f1 tilde iota x note that this is our claim this is our claim we had right f tilde of x in terms of f1 tilde x that is f tilde of x is equal to f1 tilde x minus iota times f1 tilde iota x where x belongs to x we see from 6 that f tilde of x is equal to f of x that is here is the 6 this is f tilde that from 6 we can write f tilde of x is equal to f of x this f tilde of x is equal to f of x when x is coming from z because this f1 tilde of x on z when we restrict this f1 tilde x on z it becomes f1 of x that is the image of f1 tilde on z becomes equal to the image of f1 so this will become f1 and minus iota times f1 tilde iota x when restricted to z its image will become this 6 minus f1 iota x which will which is equal to f2 x so in this in this place in the place of minus f1 tilde iota x we can write f2 x so f1 x plus iota f2 x is equal to f of x when x is coming from z so we can write f tilde of x is equal to f of x on z this shows that f tilde is an extension of f from z to x that is f tilde of x is equal to f of x on z and f tilde of x is equal to f1 tilde x minus iota times f1 tilde iota x when x belongs to x so we have find a linear extension of f of x known as f tilde of x so our remaining task is to prove that this f tilde is a linear functional on the complex vector space x and f tilde satisfies 3 star our main target which is 3 star which says that f tilde, f -tilde of x absolute is lesser or equal to p of x we will prove this so first we will show that this f tilde is a linear functional on the complex vector space x that is one can be hold one hold can be seen from the following calculations here here we have shows that this f tilde when applied on x plus y it gives by formula f tilde of x is equal to f1 tilde x minus iota times f1 tilde iota x using this f tilde of x plus y is equal to f1 tilde x plus y minus iota times f1 tilde iota into x plus y so f1 tilde is a linear functional so we can write from here that f1 tilde x plus f1 tilde y minus iota this f1 tilde is linear so we can write it as f1 tilde x f1 tilde iota x plus iota y so in the next step f1 tilde x plus f1 tilde y minus iota times this f tilde f1 tilde is li linear so f1 tilde iota x plus f1 tilde iota y which further implies that f1 tilde iota x f1 tilde x minus iota times f1 tilde iota x plus f1 tilde 
y minus times f1 tilde iota y which implies that f tilde of x plus y is equal to f tilde of x plus f tilde of y implies that f tilde preserves addition that is this f tilde we have claimed that in this f tilde is equal to f1 tilde of x minus iota times f1 tilde iota x this f tilde of x preserves the addition so here is the f tilde of a plus iota b times x here we have showed that this f tilde also preserves the scalar multiplication that is f tilde of a plus iota b x can be written as by formula by this this can be written as f tilde of a plus iota b x f1 tilde a x plus iota b x we have distributed this x here and here so a x plus iota b x minus iota times f1 tilde iota a x minus b x a f1 tilde x plus b f1 tilde iota x minus iota so f1 a times f1 tilde is linear so we can write it in this form so taking a plus b a plus iota b here a plus a plus iota b common we can write it in this form which becomes this which implies that f tilde of a plus iota b x is equal to a plus iota b f tilde of x that is f tilde of x pre f tilde this f tilde of x it also preserves scalar multiplication so this f tilde preserves addition and scalar multiplication so f tilde is a linear functional we now prove two here is the two two in two we will prove that f tilde satisfies three star three star is f tilde of x absolute is lesser or equal to p of x that is f tilde of x is dominated by p of x or is bounded by p of x we now prove this for any x such that f tilde of x is equal to zero if we consider f tilde of x to be a zero functional then this holds since p of x is greater than or equal to zero by one and two by one and two one is the sub additivity of the sublinear functional p and two is the positive homogeneity so from one and two it implies that p of x is greater than or equal to zero so when this f tilde is a linear functional so we it proves three star when f tilde is a zero functional from one and two it implies that p of x is greater than or equal to zero and it proves the three star suppose that x be such that f tilde of x is not equal to zero we assume that f tilde of x is not a zero functional then then we can write using the polar form of complex quantities that is f tilde of x is equal to f tilde of x absolute e to the power iota theta because every complex number can be written in the polar form so f tilde of x is equal to f tilde of x absolute e to the power iota theta thus f tilde of x absolute is equal to f tilde of x e to the power minus iota theta shifting this e to the power iota theta iota theta to the left we get this and from this f tilde is linear so considering e to the power minus iota theta is scalar 
f tilde is linear so we can write it in this form that is f tilde f tilde of e to the power minus iota theta times x since f tilde of x is real because f tilde of x was a complex value real function was a complex value linear functional so as its absolute will be a real number is real the last expression is real that is this will be real and thus equal to its real part that is f tilde of x absolute will be equal to the real part of this f tilde of e to the power minus iota theta x hence by 2 2 is the positive homogeneity of the sublinear function p that is f tilde of x absolute is equal to this is the real part of this f tilde f tilde of x absolute is equal to f tilde of e to the power minus iota theta x which can be written in this form f1 tilde e to the power minus iota theta x so this is lesser or equal to p of e to the power minus iota theta x and this can be written in this form this that is p is a linear function so the scalar e to the power minus iota theta can be written in we can write here because p is linear so e to the power minus iota theta, theta absolute p of x h is equal to p of x because the absolute of this e to the power minus iota theta is 1 here we know that the absolute of e to the power iota theta is 1 so the absolute of 1 divided by e to the power iota theta absolute of 1 divided by e to the power iota theta Th that is the absolute this is equal to this 1 divided by e to the power iota theta absolute which is equal to 1 so f tilde of x absolute is lesser or equal to p of x this completes completes the proof which is our main target that is f tilde of x absolute is lesser or equal to p of x the f tilde is bounded by this same linear functional which was defined on the vector space x so this completes the proof of the theorem the theorem generalized han banach theorem so this is the end of the lecture thank you for watching the video